Is it important to know if you have type 2 or type 3 hair? I personally think it is. Um, I don't think that your curl pattern is the biggest factor in understanding what will work for your hair. Not by a long shot. I think um, your porosity, your density, your um, hair strand thickness are all more important than your curl pattern. But I do think there are a lot of kind of general truths as far as what works for wavy hair and what works for type 3 curly hair. Um, that if you have wavy hair and you start trying to follow like a type 3 hair routine, I don't think that's very likely to work for you. And so I think just in learning your own hair, um, it can be really helpful to learn about wavy hair and look for other wavy hair creators, wavy hair specific products, uh, sort of within reason anyway. I don't think that like wavy hairsprays are very good, but um, for example, if you walk into a store and it says for type 3 and type 4 hair, a lot of Shea Moisture products will say that. I think some Miel, Miel, um, sorry, I'm not sure how that's pronounced, but um, will say type 4, type 4 hair on them or for um, tightly curly hair, for kinky coily hair. Um, I think it's important to know that if you have wavy hair and you see products that say those things on them, they're not likely to work for you. They're likely going to be too heavy, too moisturizing. Um, and there are just some differences between wavy, curly, and coily hair. Another reason that I found it really helpful to um, recognize the difference between wavy and curly for me was finding a hairstylist. Um, about a year ago, I went to a diva curl specialist and she had type 3 hair and most of um, the clients that she has have type 3 hair. I could tell from the appointment just in talking with her that there were things that she didn't really understand about wavy hair despite having all this experience with curly hair. Um, there are just differences in wavy and curly hair and she definitely recognized that my hair was wavy and not curly but um, she just wasn't familiar with wavy hair. Like um, she told me I shouldn't use gel for example, that wavy hair doesn't do well with gel. Um, she recommended using a sea salt spray instead of um, like gel or mousse and that just isn't uh, going to be very effective for most people with wavy hair and um, there were just other little things like that. I could just tell that um, she wasn't well versed in wavy hair and um, the haircut didn't turn out very well. Uh, there's some funny pictures on my blog if you want to go see me looking like a clown with a bad haircut. Um, but then several months later I regained courage. I guess it was almost a year later. Um, and I thought I wanted to try a curl cut again, but I specifically tried seeking out somebody who was really familiar with wavy hair. Um, the woman I wound up going to actually has wavy hair herself, and I could tell from her Instagram, um, she posts lots of before and after of um, the haircuts that she does, that she has a lot of wavy hair clients. And so um, when I wrote about this on my blog, I called her a wavy specialist. She doesn't actually refer to herself that way, but um, just somebody who had a lot of experience with wavy hair and my haircut was better and my um, experience with just talking to her, I could just tell that she totally understood my hair type. I learned lots of helpful information from her. Um, it was just a much better experience. And so knowing if you're wavy or curly might make a difference in the hair specialist that you want to see and in your experience in seeing somebody, um, depending on whether they kind of specialize more in wavy hair or curly hair. So what are some common differences between wavy and curly hair? Now, I really think that porosity, density, and hair strand thickness are more important than wavy or curly, but there are some general truths about what works for wavy hair and what works for curly hair, and so I thought I'd go over some of those. Generally, curly hair has a more durable curl pattern, and so uh, people with type 3 hair are more likely to be able to use shampoo and conditioner and nothing else and their hair is still going to look pretty obviously curly. Where wavy hair a lot of times it requires products either to maintain their waves at all like some some people with wavy hair their hair will look nearly straight if they don't use products or it will just be significantly straighter um, where you know the structure of their waves really needs the support from a product like gel or mousse. Type 3 curly hair is usually more dry than wavy hair. Uh, so 
the oils from our scalp have to travel down our hair strands and the tighter your curl pattern is the harder it is for oil to travel down your hair strands so wavy hair uh, usually doesn't struggle with a ton of dryness it might be a bit more dry than straight hair um, but it's not usually going to have a real severe issue with dryness the way that um, type 3 and type 4 hair often will struggle with. Because wavy hair isn't as dry as type 3 and type 4 hair, usually, um, we don't usually need to use as much conditioner to deep condition as often or to use like heavy um, conditioning products like oils or butters on our hair in order to keep it um, moisturized and feeling soft and manageable. Wavy hair usually needs harder hold than type 3 hair. Um, and for some reason, I feel like a lot of retailers and companies really get this wrong. Um, I know that if you go to Ulta and you click on like their wavy hair section, it will tell you that wavy hair does best with very light hold. Um, and I think that's just completely false. I think wavy hair needs really strong hold. Um, curly hair kind of needs a more medium hold. Generally, wavy hair needs a harder hold because the curl pattern is just less durable on its own, so it needs that extra support from hold. Wavy hair often needs to be clarified more often than curly and coily hair. Um, that's related to our hair usually being less dry and also um, being less tolerant of heavy ingredients. So a lot of times wavy hair will be more prone to build up and um, will get weighed down easily and so clarifying is um, a great solution for coping with those issues. And kind of the upside of that is that because our hair usually isn't as dry, we can clarify more often or use stronger shampoos more often uh, without it stripping our hair or being dr too drying on our hair, causing uh, issues with the look or feel that we want in our hair. And finally, wavy hair is usually more easily weighed down. Some people with wavy hair do struggle a bit with dryness, but even if you uh, feel like your hair is dry and you're looking to get it more conditioned, you still usually want to avoid heavy products, um, products with lots of oils or butters. Um, wavy hair that's dry often does well by adding hydration, by adding water, more so than adding lots of um, heavy conditioners. If you're looking to figure out what will work for your hair, I really would recommend that you find out your porosity, your density, and your hair strand thickness. And if you aren't sure how to determine those things, I have a blog post that covers all three. And I'll link that in the description. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I have a blog post that covers how to determine all three of those hair properties. I'll link that in the description. <laughs> I'll make that below. Okay. Description. Description. I have a blog post that covers all three of those hair properties and how to figure out which one you have. Um, and I'll link that in the box below.